build back better, blah, 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 green economy, blah, 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 net zero by 2050, blah, 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 net zero, blah, 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 climate neutral, blah, blah, blah. Thunberg's Fridays for Future marches resumed last month and are gaining momentum ahead of the United Nations Climate Change Conference, known as COP26, later this month. If you could fill in the blah, 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 uh, what words would you want to hear from these leaders? Uh, I mainly wouldn't want to hear words because we've heard many words, but as it is now, these words aren't really leading to anything. What would you say is the price of waiting as opposed to globally trying to take action, no matter how small or large? I think that already we are seeing devastating effects of inaction and of waiting. And if we continue to wait, that will only get worse. These damages will be irreversible. The UN says global warming has already pushed our planet into a code red for humanity. And Greta is challenging more than 100 countries to renew their vow to reduce carbon emissions by 2030 and actually fulfill those promises. What do you think it is going to take for that change to happen? It's, it's a very big task that's ahead of us. We need to, to change social norms. One thing that it will take is honesty. We need to be honest about what we are doing and we need to be brave because if we do not start to treat the crisis like a crisis, then the people around us will not understand that we are in an emergency. So it's going to wow. be interesting. Uh, President B Biden has uh, pledged to make a major reduction in U.S. greenhouse emissions in order to meet the coal of the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, but, you know, you've got other countries, China yeah. being the, one of the other major ones that needs to make those those uh, reductions as well. So it's going to be kind of interesting. And, and we conducted this uh, interview as part of NBC News partnership with covering climate now. That's very good. She always brings it home. It's something else this morning I wanted to show you guys that brings it home for me. This side by side of what the Santa Monica Pier is going to look yeah. like in a, not even in 100 years, by 2100. So in our Wait, children's what? lifetime, yes. they say, correct me if I'm wrong, Al, but if we continue on the trajectory yeah. of if the this emissions. Is, if, if this is a three degree uh, temperature rise, okay. uh, this is what the Santa Monica Pier will look like. Wow. At 2100, this 2100. is the, the, the lifetime yeah. of kids living today. Yeah. So all those, all those businesses and homes, yeah, because of uh, because of, of ice cap melt. That puts it in so, perspective. And if you go on the Climate Central website, they have a, a number of those those comparisons. New York City, Washington D.C. Yeah. I grew up going out there. It's a, yeah. it, it gave me the wow. chills to see that. Yeah. yeah. Thank Those are the that. kind of things I think it, that will resonate because I think sometimes people almost lose sight of it. You almost hear climate change and there are some like Greta who like take it seriously exactly. and then others just kind of say, okay, let me just recycle that and yeah, keep but, it moving. But it's so much and more it's, than it's that. already happening in cities like Miami, places like that where you have, uh, you know, blue sky flooding because of high tides, winds and sea level rise.